Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And once again, like my uh, previous two guests, I found a friend that I've known online for about four, maybe even five years. And this is our first time actually chatting with each other, which is so awesome. And after I had so much fun with Anthony and Tajaya, I was like, I got to reach out to Goldheart. So Goldheart, say hi to everyone and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Goldheart. And as everybody may have known, I was a moderator for Rare's Berry, but I made my departure. I just didn't make it known. So I started to make my very own content on YouTube. And then I went from Twitch and I went back to YouTube, considered that YouTube is exactly my first love. Awesome. That's cool. And yeah, that's how I met you, I think. Uh, Where's Barry was, a, so, you know, he, he kind of started off doing uh, Resident Evil content. And that kind of brought people like me and you to his channel to check out his content. And then, yeah, you were moderating it for a while. And I remember one day I was like, uh, I was watching Barry and I was like, oh, where's Goldheart? I was like, oh, she probably, maybe she has school today, maybe something. And then I saw you were uploading your own videos and that actually made me really happy because I know you have a deep love for Resident Evil and we're definitely going to talk about that today for sure. Um, but before we get into that, uh, about your channel, um, everyone who's watching this, if you'd like to go subscribe, if you're a big Res Evil fan, definitely go. Uh, Goldheart's link, I'll put it in the description box down below. And uh, and you actually have some cool artwork I just saw that we just mentioned before we started recording. Tell me a little bit about that image because I think it's really, really cool. Uh, yes, um, for a while now, I've just been complaining about having uh, a little logo art. Huh? Which actually like um what do we call it a customized art for my sure. channel, and you no know, for my thirty first birthday a friend of mine and also my moderator had the art made for me for my birthday, so I was over the moon with that art <laughs> like literally over the moon with it. I said okay, this is the art here. This yeah. is exactly what I thought about. And so when the minute she sent it to me. I uploaded everything else that became my new logo. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a wonderful piece of art. I love it so much. And and uh, and obviously it's it's a uh, Resident Evil art fan art too, but I so let's let's kind of start there cuz I think that makes the most sense since we're both big fans and that's what brought us together as 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 people to get to know each other. What is it about Resident Evil that you love so much? If you could sum it up or or you talk as much as you want, whatever it is. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What brings me to Resident Evil so much is actually the story. I yep. mean, mine is the whole live action. I'm not talking about the whole Alice thing and the newest Re uh, Resident Evil film that's coming up now. I'm talking about the story, the lore that, that combines with it. And then if you read the novels that kind of links everything together, that brings deeper love into the Resident Evil franchise. I'm talking about the uh, author, S.D. Uh, S. Perry, if you know who she is. I read a couple of her books, and when I read her books, I fell even more in love with it. And it also brings more questions into the franchise of Resident Evil, like how did it start it, why did it begin, etc. I agree. Um, actually, I love S.D. Perry. Uh, she's amazing. She's really cool to talk to on Twitter, if you're on Twitter. Um, she answers fan questions. She's really, really cool. And uh, and I yeah, I love her books. I loved her dad's stuff. He used to write sci-fi when I was uh, really young. Um, he did uh, some Alien and Predator stuff, and he did um, you know a lot of great sci-fi stuff. And so when I saw that she was writing and she kind of took a, you know on as and became an author herself, I was like, all right, she's gonna do Resident Evil. I'm gonna check this out. And those books, you're right. Do you have a favorite of her books? Is there any one of, the, of those books that is a favorite of yours? Yes, the, my favorite one would actually be um, The Conspiracy. That's actually oh. my favorite. That's the one that's starting Chris and Jill. Um, right. I did start it on the Resident Evil 2 book, but I had a test that day, and I read the book before I started testing, and, well, it pretty much helped me pass that test <laughs> after, <laughs> after reading it because I kept reading it nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, right. Of course. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Umbrella Conspiracy is also my favorite. It, uh, like you said, it's based on the first video game. And it also introduces us to the mysterious Trent, um, mm -hmm. which uh, for many, many years, I went by that name on uh, 
like message boards and stuff like that, people were always mad because I had the name Trent and they were like, no, like, because everyone else had to be Trent 11 or Trent 200. And, uh, and even when I did my uh, ambassador program, I was Ambassador Trent. And so, uh, so yeah, I love that character. I love that universe. And you're right. It opens up the lore a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of the lore of Resident Evil, um, do you, is there a, like a piece of the lore that sticks out in your mind as the, even if it's not your favorite, but just like something that's very memorable? Um, what sticks out the most will actually be um, Operation Raccoon City. Because okay. if you think about it, it's like a what if, what if Leon died, what if Claire died, what if right. this, what if that. And then um, you have that choice to let them live or let them die. And if you kill, um, choose to kill Leon, you make a time paradox. Resident Evil 4 never happened. He never right. met Jack Krauser. He never met Chris. Um, he right. already met Claire, so there's no me need for me to say that. But there, you know, it's just, it's just, he never became a drunk in Vendetta and killed all those people on a motorcycle. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> and right. that might be my time, time paradox. Right. But if you choose to let him live, then this, then him being a series will continue right. to go on. That's cool. I, you know, that I feel like that game, I, I still own that game, even though I don't currently have a system that could play the game. Um, but I, I do I still own it. And I have a, I like that game, Operation Raccoon City. I think a lot of fans, uh, you know, when it's anything outside standard Resident Evil, um, they typically don't venture out too much. And, and tr like, I know hardcore fans play every Resident Evil game, like me and you and Barry and other people like that. But there is like, there is a majority out there that just plays the numbered Resident Evil games. And they don't give stuff like that a chance because it's different. It, it's a different style of gameplay. But I liked Raccoon Operation Raccoon City. That's I'm so glad you mentioned that one. That's a good. One. I also like Dead Aim. Did you ever play Dead Aim? No, I never played Dead Aim. But I had uh, I got a friend who uh, played Dead Aim. She played Dead Aim on Twitch, and the grammar on that game. Oh my goodness, we couldn't let that go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. No way. Um, yeah, I lo I love that game because you get to play as like a southern guy, and he's got. And, and when you played the game uh, when it came out. You had the gun on the PlayStation 2, and it had a joystick on the back. So you moved your character with the joystick and shot with the gun. I was like, it was awesome. I thought it was a really cool game. Um, oh, yeah, I, I, I hope you get to play one day. I never see that anywhere in the store that you just told me about. I've never seen that. We're no? just that cheap here. We're just that cheap. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because I, I think I I think I imported a version of it where it came with the gun uh, at one point. Um, and so, yeah, that's cool. Well, that's... um. Well, kind of going down that then. So like we said earlier, you started off as a moderator. Um, I've actually never done that, but I, I understand the importance of a moderator, especially as channels grow or if it's a big channel, like you definitely need someone to kind of help the person who's streaming, you know, um, navigate the chat and, you know, and, and everything like that. So just out of curiosity, what was that experience like and how did you end up being a moderator for Barry? Well, I would say I was uh, pretty much voting in to be his moderator. Yeah, I um, voted for every Because <laughs> everybody was, you no, know, they had jobs they were working. And yeah. you know, I, what I had, I only had, had school. I, I stayed home. Okay. I didn't have anything much going on for me, like, like now, <laughs> just school to stay home. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, me being his moderator was good for some time, you know, free t-shirts and everything else sure. it was good for some time and then eventually i started to branch out on my own i like that that's cool and what what made you want to do that because was it just like hey i love barry i love supporting him but i have a love for this universe too was that like kind of the 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 inspiration to be like i want to go share my love for resident evil now and not just my love for resident evil just or more so my love for games in general because okay. if you see my, my channel, it has Tomb Raider on there also. Yes. I am currently playing Little Nightmares as well. But the thing okay. is, though, consider I got a 24-7 homework. I'm not, I'm not going to have the time to stream like that. So the only thing I got to do is just pretty much upload the video while I'm in class. I got you. Oh, while you're in class. Oh, man. Uh, let's not tell. We won't tell your teacher. Uh <laughs> I am. Um, it's funny. Yeah. Cause I, I have, I go through your channel and uh, I usually, so you, and there's a couple other people sometimes, cause I like, I like just hearing games being played 
you know, and um, especially Resident Evil. And it's funny you mentioned Tomb Raider because, yeah, I was going through your channel and I'm like, man, I'm so glad she has Tomb Raider playthroughs because I've played the the remakes. I've played the first two and I own the third one, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, but I haven't played it yet. But um, but I love your playthroughs of these games and I love Tomb Raider also. Um, what is it about that franchise that kind of pulled you into streaming that along with Resident Evil and along other games you were playing? Okay, um, you talk about for Tomb Raider? Yeah, for Tomb Raider, yeah. Okay, um, I decided to play Tomb Raider uh, during the fact when the pandemic was really bad. Mm -hmm. The campuses was closed, the source was closed, and I was really was trying to pour some uh, money into the channel to help out with the house and everything else. Um, gotcha. So I made sure I was enjoying the game as well for my viewers enjoy me getting killed in the game or me doing the killing <laughs> in the game. I was trying to make it um, entertainment as possible. But um, along, the, along the line, the fact is everybody has fun, everybody enjoyed the stream, you know, and I continued to play Tomb Raider. So I tried to set up a time to play Tomb Raider, and one of my teammates uh, was taking up all the time. And I okay. said, okay, you know, you're taking up all the time. You know I got to finish Tomb Raider. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he let me finish up Tomb Raider by that time. Well, that was very nice of him. That was, yeah, because, yeah, you got to finish that game, man. It's a good game. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, uh, I love that that world too. And uh, I'm so glad you're into it as well. And, and and on top of Tomb Raider, on top of Resident Evil, because I saw you played Little Nightmares recently as well, which I love that game as also. Um, what other kind of games that have you been uh, looking into? Because I know you had a vote at one point for recently for Resident Evil Zero or um, or Evil Within Two, and I love Evil Within Two, but man, it's so fun watching you play Resident Evil Zero. I don't know if you're sick of that game or not, but I like watching you play it. Um, so what what other games like are you hoping? Um, that you could maybe squeeze in between, you know, uh, this semester? Because I know you okay, you only have so much time, like you said, but what other games are, would you hope to be able to play at some point soon? Um, probably after Little Nightmares, I will uh, jump back into um, Tomb Raider. I will okay. go into Rise of the Tomb Raider after Little Nightmares. Okay. So, because I... I beat Rise of the Tomb Raider. I was like, okay, I beat Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now I know everything that's in there. I'm, right. I'm going to get ready to upload that on YouTube pretty soon. Cool. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, I can't wait for that. That's going to be great. <laughs> and because a lot of times, because I've talked about this with previous guests I've had and stuff too, is like, um, because people will say like, oh, what do you, what do you mean you don't have time to do this? You know, what do you mean? You, you know, I don't think sometimes people understand that, um, and some do, I mean, a lot of people do, I think, but sometimes you get those people that are like, Hey, put more stuff out, put more stuff out. But obviously everything takes time. You one, you got to mm -hmm. play the game and you got to record that. So that's, you know, takes time. And then editing takes time. Rendering takes time. Uh, my friend sent me a great meme today where it said, uh, your video is rendering. It'll be done in one hour. And then when it has like 10% left, it's like your video will be done in four days. <laughs> 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 and it's like, yeah, that happens sometimes. Uh, how, how, how do you, because I love what you said earlier. I like time management stuff, and you seem to have it done really well, which is, okay, when I'm in class and I'm studying and I'm doing this, and I don't need the laptop or anything for, for any purposes I need, you have it up, you know, rendering a video, uploading a video. That's very good time management. So what made you, uh, was that just like an obvious thing for you? You were like, hey, here's how I can still put something up there but while still, you know, paying attention to my everyday life as well. Is um, what I thought about that uh, before I paid for my classes, I uh -huh. said, okay, I'm getting a lot of uh, recommendations to stream. I'm getting recommendations of doing DLCs, even though I, I pretty much said I'm not doing these DLCs. I'm not doing these challenges because I have class. I'm going to have class coming up pretty soon. I'm trying to graduate. I need to have my mind on my graduation pretty soon. Right. So, and I know that they want, they love my content. They want me to push out more. I said, okay, I need to find a way to make things a balance. So what I did, I recorded my playthroughs. Mm -hmm. I exported them. I make sure everything was well good and nindy. And then I uploaded them as a schedule on YouTube, 8.30 is the time where I'm in class. And also that's the time, oops, sorry, that's my phone. That's the time <laughs> that the video is played. So okay. I get that well balanced. 
that's great. I, it's funny. I do that too. Like uh, I'll, I'll have it render while I'm going to bed at night. And then when I wake up, I upload it to YouTube and that's on my drive into work so that by the time I get to work, before I go in, I can check and see if it uploaded and if anyone has seen it yet. Uh, so that's so funny. We're like it's with great minds think alike, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so speaking of school, because I know that, it, and I love what you just said. I mean, obviously, and that's another thing sometimes people think, uh, they think every YouTuber would love to be a full-time YouTuber. And that may be the case in a lot of cases, um, or it may be the thing in a lot of cases, but we all do also have lives outside, you know, like we have full-time jobs, we have school like you do. And I love hearing you say that that is your top priority, but that you still make time to put out content just shows your love for it, just shows how pure your love is for it. So with school, like how has that balance been uh, over the past couple of years, like, you know, doing the school thing and the upload? I mean, it seems like it's going well from my angle because you put out content, but I'm just curious, like is how much hard work is that to balance that? It's, it's very hard. Sometimes you get a little stressful as well because, you know, it's, it's easier if you're living by yourself and right. you're not living by yourself. Sometimes you have, um, I have my little niece coming in and see what I'm doing or just trying to be a pain in my backside. It's just <laughs> so hard So sometimes. And if then you got loud music outside the window. Right. You got that as well. You want to make sure none of the stuff is being caught. So that's right. why I stopped recording my voice on the game and just, okay, okay I'm just going to record this straight from the system. And that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm starting doing. Okay. Yeah, I um I started doing that too. Now when I stream a game, I, I don't put the headset on. Um, I just capture the, the, the quality of the, the, you know, the footage. And then what I'll do now is I, I edit down, like if I take an hour stream, I'll edit it down to like 10 or 15 minutes. And then I'll make, I'll, I'll put it up. This is, I'm going to reveal my secrets here. I'll, uh, <laughs> I, I play it on my computer and then I just, it's like I'm doing a reaction video. Um, and then I, and then I edit my reactions into the places they need to go into. And that way I have a nice 10, 15 minute video. You see some gameplay, you see me reacting to it. Um, but it's, it's kind of fabricated in a little bit. It's, it's me reacting to it later, but I, um, I like doing that because like you said, you just can never plan for noise interruptions. Um, I think that's something a lot of people don't think about is like, Hey, we like you, it sounds like you care about the quality of the stuff you put out and anyone who does will tell you. If, if a car horn is going off or a fire alarm's going off or your niece comes in, like you you do want that stuff cut out so it doesn't interrupt the experience. Um, because, yeah. you know, I think you and I, we care about the experience. That's what we like in other YouTubers and streamers is uh, is just the game and story and lore and experience. So um, so with that in mind, you earlier you kind of mentioned you like the games, the, the books, not so much the... Um, the Resident Evil movies so much, uh, like as far as like uh, what you, what you consider the lore, um, is have you ever checked out any of the the comic books or anything like that? Uh, the Ma, the Mawongs or Ma, I can't remember the how he had to pronounce it, but there's like uh, there's almost like manga, but there was like a, I think in China or somewhere else they did like Resident Evil three comics. Have you ever got a hand? So you got your hands on any of those? Uh, no, I haven't got my hands on any of them, but I'm pretty sure they're a part of the lore, uh, especially yeah. the mangas. They're a yeah. part of the lore, as far as I understand, and read up on the Rikia. Um, but as for anything else, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any physical copy of the mangas or the comics. I haven't seen them. I haven't seen any copies on Amazon. None. And yeah, the they... only thing, just oh, good. Uh, it just I haven't seen anything. Yeah, it's it's it, they're hard to find. Uh, uh, I think when the mangas, because I, I now now I know what you're talking about, because there is actual mangas out now that tied into um, uh, Chris and Pierce. I think they went to mm -hmm. like a college, right, with zombies at a college. Um, so yeah, you're right. That's technically kind of they they wrote it to be kind of canon in a way. Um, there's a new manga coming out soon that's based on Infinite Darkness, the new anime. Um, that was, uh, well, I, they call it anime, but it was obviously a CGI movie. Uh, but uh, but if have you seen, now, are you a fan of those at all, the CGI ones? Oh, yeah. I like the CGI and not so much of the uh, live films. The CGI is actually canon, not not the live ones. Um, like, if, you, if you're being careful in the order 
with the games in the CGI, it actually does make sense. Like, Infinite Darkness is after Resident Evil 2. So, right. and it kind of on down forward. Um, right. Now, I didn't see the trailer for uh, after Infinite Darkness. I didn't see it. But I take your word for it. Okay. And the only thing I hope is that um, Claire is in it and that she gets more screen time because I'm going to be honest and please don't take this the wrong way, Capcom. I love you. I do. I can't pull no punches. If I don't put in the punches, I don't love you. Right. Claire needs some more screen time. She needs more love. Leon had a whole lot of love in Infinite Darkness Season 1. Claire needs that too. So... That's all I got to say. <laughs> I agree with you. Yeah, no, I, I did. I actually, that was one of my criticisms of that movie when I reviewed it was, what's up? Why, why isn't Claire in more of this? Like, because uh, those CG movies are all about Leon. Like, he's the star of all of them. Um, but I felt like in the one, even though I didn't like Vendetta too much, I still like that it did balance Leon and Chris pretty well. Um this one, I felt like it did not balance Leon and Claire very well. I almost felt like you could almost cut Claire out of the movie and the movie wouldn't have been that much different, which is sad because that means they didn't really write her that well either. Um, so there, I feel you on that one. No, I, I agree. And you're right, Capcom. I mean, I've, I see it now a lot. Like on my gaming channel, I cover, I'm like 85 episodes in. I've been doing a Resident Evil series over there where I follow the making of the new movie that's coming out at, at Thanksgiving. And man, there are Res Evil fans have real harsh criticisms. But you're right, though. It I think it comes from a good place ultimately because they just they love this so much. And I feel like sometimes I go like, ah, it's just people whining or crying. But I think I learned a really good lesson this week, and it humbled me on my channel when some guy came in and said, "Hey, look, we're not upset about the thing you're talking about. We're upset about this." And I was like, ah, okay. Like it, that, it, it kind of made me see that, okay, this criticism is coming from a place of love and maybe not everyone has a good way of verbalizing what they don't like, but, but their intentions are, I feel good. So have you seen the images from the new movie yet? And do you have any opinions on those? Um, yeah, uh, I see the new <laughs> images. Yeah. Um, some, uh, it's at first about, I understand you want to be diverse. That's not a problem. I don't have sure. an issue with diversity. Right. I have an issue with the story. I have an right. issue where, where it's gone. And when I found out that there will be a love triangle between Wesker, Jill, and Chris. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Back the bus up. What? That's what, I, that's what I heard. That's what <laughs> I heard. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh that, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Calm down, go. Calm down. You know, right. it's a movie. Um, then I saw the picture of the person who's supposed to be Leon. Oh, uh, right. no, 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 no. He's more so of a Carlos if you pay attention to him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, okay. I'm going to try to keep my criticisms to myself. That's okay. And then more stuff happen. I can't keep this criticism to myself. I'm so sorry. I'm that so is, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why I asked because I, I, I think, because I, I might put this interview up now that we're talking about this. I might actually put this up on both of my channels. I think this would make a great episode of my Resident Evil show also um, because it's nice. I mean, trust me, there are people that in my comment section uh, of that channel that are saying exactly what you're saying. I mean, you're, you're really nice about it, which I like. Some people are a little more aggressive, um, but, but I, I like the way you put it. And like I said, someone commented on my channel recently that it kind of opened my eyes to what he actually meant, even though I didn't feel like he was saying it properly the first time, but that's just my opinion on it. But he clearly was like trying to tell me something and I wasn't, I seem to not be listening to him. So that's why I'm glad you're here to kind of like ease me into that, uh, and that and that thought process. I mean, I understand like for me, I was trying to tell this guy, I've worked in casting before and in movies. And I know what it's like sometimes when you get someone who comes in and they just do such a good job in the reading of capturing what the essence of the character is. Like, you know, with Leon, 
he's sometimes a little bit of a ladies' man, but he's a uh, he's altruistic. He he knows what good and evil is right away. He's a a very optimistic young police officer. Like all of these things are are very deep qualities of the character that we all love. But I also understand now that it's you know from fans' point of view, they want someone who can do that, but also look like the character. And and I get that. And sometimes though, when you're casting, you don't get that opportunity. You have someone who comes in who's a great actor but doesn't look anything like the character, and then you have someone come in who looks exactly like the character, but they're an awful actor. Uh, like you know, like the guy who was in the previous live action movies where he looked just like Leon Ferenzi before. But I'm sorry to that guy, but he was a bad actor in that movie. Um, so sometimes you you have to decide. Okay, do I want someone to look like the character or act like the character? I'm hoping that the director chose this guy because he acted like the character in the reading. But of course we won't know till we see the movie. So say, having said that, do you, even though you're critical of it, which I, I love that you are, and I love that fans do um, are, are honest with their opinions about this stuff. Cause like you said, Capcom needs to know how they really feel. Uh, even with all that said, do you think you might still go see this movie out of curiosity or just out of love for resident evil or, are you kind of like, eh, I have the games and I have the CG movies. I don't need the live action. I'm having a mixed feelings about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, fair. that's honest. I like that. So, well, it, so tell me, so tell me, like, tell tell me about that real quick. Then, like, what is um besides the look and 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 stuff like that with the characters? I know that's like a turnoff for you. What is the thing that is balancing that to where you're kind of trying to hold hope? <laughs> <laughs> Not much, right? <laughs> Just the name Resident Evil, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. No, that's great, though. But that's very honest of you, and and I love that because, like I said, like you, when I think of hardcore Resident Evil fans, people who love this universe and love it for the same reasons I do, like I think of you. You're one of those people I think of. Um, like I love Barry, and I love his channel, but he openly admits he's not a fan of the lore. He likes the gameplay and he likes kind of the mechanics and he gets into that side of the, the, the universe. But people like you and me, like we love the characters. We're there for them. We love the universe. Um, what are some of your favorite characters in this universe? Like who, who jumps to the top for you? Whether it's your favorite one or your top five, like whatever, who, who are your favorites? Oh my goodness. Um, so many, so right? Many. All of them. So many. So <laughs> many, so many. Um, there's Honk, who I wish will come back. Honk, yeah. Um, there's Leon. There's Chris. Mm -hmm. um, there's was Ethan after Village. Okay. Um, there is... Um, there's Claire. There's right. Jill. Uh, then you got Carlos at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Carlos. <laughs> you got to do more, bro. <laughs> and then there's Carl Heisenberg. I I think I can actually connect with Carl Heisenberg a little bit. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. That's cool. I um yeah, I, I that's cool that I, I love that you mentioned Hunk. I I think he's he's like the Boba Fett of the Resident Evil universe. That's what I always call him. Um, he's that guy who was in like one little. The, like bonus game and then he's like everyone's favorite uh but i like that i mean he's he's th there's something interesting about him and i think it's mostly the mystery of him um but if you play the the other games like code veronica they have a whole file on hunk um and how he trained at the rockford island so you actually get his backstory a little bit um so there's there is more to that character and yeah i um i'm sure you've you know because you follow the, the the news and stuff like that like do you wish we could go back in time? Uh, originally, one of the versions of Resident Evil Four, I think, was a game where you played as Hunk, mm -hmm. uh, and it was like during, like in the middle of a massive outbreak at the at the facility, so you had to like fight your way out of it. Is that a game you'd still like to play? Uh, I like to uh, see a game about Hunk from the very beginning, like his origins, but not just the document, his origin, where he starts from, his childhood. Why okay. did he join Umbrella? Um and so forth. Why did he disappear? Is he going in hiding? Did he get killed off? Is you no know, so much? Cause yeah. you know when um brother went, he went peace. So <laughs> <laughs> this the whole thing about uh, what I wonder about honk. You know this is a theory of mine, and you you tell me. I mean it's a fan theory, so I'm sure it's never gonna happen. But I I'll pass it on to you since you're a hunk fan. Um, 
I was thinking about, uh, we've never seen Hunk's face, right? Mm -mm. Uh, so an umbrella, like you said, their stocks crash and they went away. And, uh, and now, and then there was, they try to attempt Neo umbrella and, and then all the bad guys, the, the family from Resident Evil 6 tried to bring back umbrella. But now we actually do have a new umbrella that Chris is a part of. Um, and they're supposed to be more of like the good guys. And now apparently the BSAA are the bad guys um, after we learned in Village, so uh, which is Chris's former company. Um, so since we've never seen Hunk's face, do you think he could be right now fighting side by side with Chris? Or do you think he's working at the BSAA? It's very much possible that he is working with the BSAA. Okay. Because the BSAA is now uh, touching on bioweapons. Right. They're not sending out actual soldiers like Chris and Jill. Right. Um, I'm actually speculating that Jill should be in the DLC of Village as well. Considering that her branch is also in Europe. Or is it in Africa? It's one of those two. Well, but, I think, um, yeah, I think Sheva and Josh run the Africa division, right? Of BSAA mm -hmm. now? And then, yeah, I think Jill, you're right. I think she either went to Europe or I hope she retired. That that poor woman's been through so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope she's taking a nap. <laughs> she's earned it. <laughs> she's been kidnapped and she's been infected. She's fought the nemesis. Like she's fought tyrants. Like she's been through everything, Jill. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, poor girl. <laughs> Well, what is, um, do you have, like now, so the Village DLC, so this is actually the first time I'm hearing about that. Are they planning Village DLC? Well, Capcom is supposed to um, sh uh, broadcast itself on the 30th of, of September at 9 o'clock, but I won't be able to see it because I'll be in class. Uh, dang it. Well, I'll try to, I'll try, I, well, you know what? I don't know if I could watch it that day either. Dang it. I was going to say, I'll try to watch it for both of us, but um, September 30th is funny. That's um, a very important date for Resident Evil. Um, September 30th, you know this, obviously, but for people out there who might not, September 30th going into October 1st is when Raccoon City was bombed in the, the video game universe. So uh, I told someone recently, they asked me, they said, when are we going to get the trailer for the new Resident Evil movie? I said, well, wouldn't it be smart to release it on September 30th? And, mm -hmm. uh, and then now you're telling me there's an event that day, so... That'll probably be the day. So, but you're also saying we might get some DLC. That's amazing. Do you have you heard any rumors about what it could be about? Because I'm this is my first time hearing about it. Well, I'm not too sure about the the uh, rumors, but they're all theories out there. Okay. Um, okay. My theory is you no. Know, at the end of Village, Chris says go to Europe mm -hmm. with the BSAs at, and we're gonna hit there. So my guess is you may be Chris doing a DLC. Ethan is dead. Mm -hmm. My, Mia and and their kids going somewhere in safety. So right. you might be Chris again for this DLC face off against the BSAA. My theory, other theory is that, like I said before, yeah. Hunk may be in charge of this BSAA. <laughs> okay. Oh, that'd be great if he was in charge of like the 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 squad that is protecting the BSAA building when Chris comes back. That would be great. Um. Yeah, that's cool. Well, that's great. Well, I love the speculation there. I love the theories. Um, I, I will definitely keep an eye out for your channel too because I want to see, because um, I'm sure when you have time, you'll probably cover any news that comes out of that. Um, so for everyone who's watching, like please, like I said, Goldheart, she's an amazing person. As you can tell, she's been hanging out with me for 30 minutes now. And she's amazing. Uh, please go subscribe to her channel, especially if you're a gaming fan. Um, definitely a Resident Evil fan, you should subscribe to her. She's part of the Resident Evil family for sure. Uh, some of one, uh, Among my favorite YouTubers who, who streams Resident Evil. And, uh, and another favorite of mine is Angel Rose, who I'm going to have on the show soon too. Um, you uh, Last thing before we go, because I, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. So with everything happening right now with Resident Evil, with the success Capcom's been having with it, because... As Resident Evil fans, for, there was a couple years where it was looking pretty bleak for us. Like we were like, "Is this franchise going to stick around? Is it going to disappear like Silent Hill? Like what's going to happen?" But Seven really saved uh, the the franchise, I feel. And then from that, we've gotten remakes of two and three now, and an eighth game. So, where where do you hope this franchise? Um, and since you're a Tomb Raider fan, that franchise, where do you hope those two franchises in particular go from from here on out? Well, hopefully, uh, uh, things get a, a little better for them, because Oops. not because right now I can't say much about the Tomb Raider franchise because sure. it's just been kind of under the shadows, like no, no news about it. 
But as for Resident Evil, not too many fans are pretty much happy about what's going on. So I hope things will get better. I hope they listen to the fans, you know, listen to the outcry, have an open ear, take their criticism, listen, listen, listen. Some of them know what they're talking about, or some of them just being too nagging. I can't tell which one's which sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I just I just kind of stay out of it. So, but it's good to listen to what people are, are pick picking at. I agree. I, I think it's good. And like I said, I mean, I recently, as much as you don't want to sometimes, like I listened to someone who clearly had a very different opinion than I had on something. And at first I, I was like, oh, I, I can listen to someone's opinion. And it's, it really seemed like I wasn't. So I'm glad he was persistent uh, because then it got me to listen. Um, so yeah, Capcom, don't be like me. Don't be stubborn. <laughs> you know, li listen to people because um, whether you agree or not, there's they feel passionately about their opinion, and uh, and you, it's ignoring passion is very hard to do, um, and you, and it shouldn't be done. That's why it's so hard to do is because if someone's that passionate, you should at least hear them out. Um, so I, I love that you said that, and I love that you took the time to do this with me today. I'm so grateful, Goldheart, and it, it's been so nice talking to you and. At some point, I'd love to do this again, but I, for me, this show is, um, I'm getting these in before like my health gets, you know, too intense. So I'm, I, I but I, I promise you, at some point again, we're gonna talk because you're just amazing, and oh, I wish you were you. in school. Oh, of course, you're definitely welcome. Any last words you want to say before we head out today? Uh, I would like to say uh, thank you so much for inviting me because I was wondering, oh, he's supposed to send me an invite. We ain't going to send me an invite. I told him <laughs> that, that I'll be open until the semester starts. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey, go hard. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there yeah. he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's tough because I um, you should see my apartment. It looks like I'm trying to track down serial killers because uh, I have these memory boards in my living room. That's what I call them. But it's like dry erase boards, uh, cork boards. Um, my memory has been getting so bad lately that I, I leave notes like all, all the time. I have notes on everything, my kitchen. I have notes on the, the, the stove. Make sure you turn off the stove. Like I have notes everywhere and things are, get hard sometimes. And yeah, like I know normally in normal life, I would forget things because I have a lot going on. But yeah, I fell way behind on stuff. And I realized I'm like, wow, I found this note that was marked like June or something like that. And I was like, and it was like, you invited Goldheart and Angel Rose on your show. Make sure you follow up with that. And so I went to my Instagrams and looked at my messages, and I was like, I haven't messaged them in months. Like, oh my god. Uh, so, I, so I know I, I missed the date of what I originally said, but I, I'm so grateful you took time today to to chat with me. It meant a lot to me. Uh, no problem, man. Awesome. And good luck in school and good luck with everything. And everyone out there who's watching, if you fell in love with Goldheart like I have, please go check out her channel. The link is down below. If you're a Resident Evil fan, gaming fan, whatever it is, trust me, she's got great content that she makes over there and you're going to really enjoy yourself. So thank you again, Goldheart, and thank you all for watching. I appreciate you very much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the future. Peace.